Okay, and then you can, uh, you will be sharing the rationale to choose the number of fields or that you have chosen and the optimizing technique, objectives and priority that you would use, you have used in your plan and um, optimized plan deviates. Okay, the case for today we are going to discuss is the chest wall case we met. And the case overview is that uh, the, there was 55 year old female, left breast lung for two months and several imaging were done with the CT test and bone scan for the metastasis, which was negative. And then it was further suggested for new adjuvant chemotherapy. And it was uh, gone through the surgery. And after the surgery histopathology, it was the candidate of the, for the radiation therapy. So coming towards the planning overview, we're going to discuss the PTV and contouring of pseudobolus and the arc selection, which we do with the respect of the volume and the dose criteria on which the plan is being accepted and the dose volume histogram. So moving forward with the PTV and uh, contouring and pseudobolus. For the chest wall and breast cases, what we do, we extend our original PTV that is drawn by the doctor 0.8 cm for breast and 1 cm for chest wall. And we draw additional pseudo bolus of 1 cm for breast and 1.5 cm for chest wall onto the contours. As you can visually see, this is for the skin flash uh, in VMAT. And we extend the original PTV with uh, breast and chest wall and then apply a pseudo bolus. And further moving towards the optimization and calculating the dose, we optimize using the pseudo bolus and extended PTV drawn. We do all the optimization, lowering the hotspot and optimizing the OARs with respect to the volume. And then when it is completely optimized, we make a copy of that plan and naming it the final plan. And we select our original PTV as the target volume and just only uh, calculate with, with removing the pseudo bolus from the fields and you just only calculate it. And the, uh, then the result come, that is the calculation of the dose on our original one. What are the arc selections? We, uh, the arc selection depend obviously on the volume, uh, the extension, it is, if it is medially extended or inferiorly or superiorly extended. So in this case, we have taken four arcs in our plan. And the, uh, due to the medially extension of the volume, we have started uh, arc one from 300 degree to 170. And then the counterclockwise is for the arc two. And we have used arc three and arc four partial, quarterly arcs that is being started from the medial and then ending uh, in the media, uh, starting from the uh, corner of the volume and ending at the medial. Arc three and arc four, the uh, this is the 3D view of the arcs that we have used that you can see that it is, um, you can see that it is full two are the partial arcs covering the volume and half arcs uh, with respect to these arcs is arc three and arc four. Then moving forward with the jaw settings, we have uh, keep the jaw setting of arc one and three uh, same and arc two and four same, but the angles of the both uh, arcs are different because arc three is ending medially while arc one is going to cover whole volume with the collimeter settings of 345 and 15 degree. These are some uh, numeric values of the jaws that we have selected with the arcs. Okay, the dose criteria is suggested by our CR, uh, ICRU 83 is D90 and D2%, D but uh, we also uh, oncologist over here see D95 or, uh, should be covering 95% of the volume. And the hotspot with a seven of the dose should not be more than two cc volume outside the PTV. This was a bit of a complicated case because of the volume extension medially and uh, the closeness of heart and lung towards the volume. It was good to uh, achieving of FC left lung, but the volume uh, was achieved 93% with eight gray heart. When a uh, primary oncologist saw the volume, he uh, uh, suggested, he said he want to want more heart to be saved more. We need to work more on the heart part. But we said if we work on uh, heart, it's going to less the PTV volume, which is already 
uh, 93% uh, at that time. But he said that he's going to accept the uh, coverage less, but he wants a heart to be uh, less than eight grade. So then we worked uh, on it and we achieved 7.7, .7, but the dose we achieved with PTV coverage was 91.4. And what is, it was a clinically challenging. So he accepted with the 91.4% uh, of the PTV coverage and heart mean dose 7.73 gray with the Ypsilator V17, 21.5%. Okay, this is the uh, overview. We, again, uh, this is the complete picture of the DVH. We achieved the, the 91.4 percent with heart 7.73, and V17 was V17 uh, was 21.4. And uh, we also was there. Lateral breast were also 6.3 gray, which is uh, the tolerant six. So it was a clinically challenging. Was uh, volume was much extended. So. We have did the literature review for the pseudo bolus and uh, the arcs we have used uh, in the planning for the four or two uh, arcs, but you have to choose the, um, the number of arcs depends uh, on the, how much dose modulation you expect will be needed. So you can uh, do it two or four or three, whatever is suggested by seeing the volume and the modulation you are required. So thank you, that's from my side. And I would like uh, to be open discussion. And uh, I will all be also be sharing my remote ex, uh, my desktop. And it is one of the way you can share your uh, cases in future. Either you can present uh, through presentation that I have just presented, or you can share if you have uh, in your center opportunity to remotely access your Eclipse or any other system and show it to the audience. Or you can also have the option of the webcam and you can sh uh, share your monitor screen through that. I would like the panelists to so share their thoughts, uh, Mr. Sharif, on the presentation or on general practice. And uh, we will continue with the question answers. You may ask question answers in the chat box or you can unmute yourself for the question answers. Thank you. Asalaamu Alaikum and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so basically, uh, we are also doing here uh, rapid our breast cases with uh, uh, breath hold and free breathing free technique. It depends on patient. So can I share my experience like what we are doing here in my department? Yes, yes, for sure. So uh, uh, as I told you that either breath hold and free breathing we are doing and we are using uh, Align RT for surface, surface guidance and uh, we started with uh, uh, if patient can hold the breath, so we prefer to breath hold for left breast cases. And also even for the right breast cases, we prefer uh, the breath hold for rapid R cases. For 3D CRT, it doesn't matter like if for right breast, either it is free breathing or breath hold. So uh, actually the uh, PTV coverage uh, for in our department, uh, the physician does not look at the PTV coverage. We create an OPTV which is uh, five mm crop from the PTV. And we report the dose 95% to the OPTV because you know the surface coverage is very challenging uh, for the breast cases. And we also use the expanded, uh, this uh, expanded OP, uh, PTV thing, but uh, for breath hold and for free breathing, we have different criteria. So for breath hold, we use basically uh, 0.5 mm from the skin, from the body expansion and for free breathing we use 1.5 mm from the uh, body for the ptv so this is an expansion then we create the this uh, pseudo bolus uh, and uh, this is also depend either it's breath hold or free breathing so for breath hold we create the bolus with 0.5 mm expansion of ptv and bolus is 1 cm and for free breathing we use uh, 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 2 cm bolus with 1.5 mm expansion of PTV. 
and also we give the uh, also we give the uh, uh, hu value assigned to the bolus which is basically uh, minus 300 i don't know what you guys are giving to uh, it but here we give uh, minus 300 to uh, minus 100 and for optimization we basically uh, create some ring structure from the ptv and uh, here the physician are very concerned about the contralateral doses so we try to uh, the main problem with the rapid arc breath is basically the low dose and we are very uh, uh, concerned about the five gray doses to the contralateral parts and uh, so for this we create ring structure also we cre create rind which is when you know, usually people call it edges or internal ptv something like this for the good coverage then after creating this ring and rind we create some uh, help structure like for we can expand the heart towards the superior and inferior slices as a control like we can copy the heart structure and we can expand it uh, till uh, uh, scf and uh, down towards the breast inferior slice and the other thing which is uh, uh, other organ at risk which are more concerned are humeral head and uh, humeral head and contralateral breast contralateral lung and sometimes liver so uh, uh, we create like some sort of uh, help structure and sometimes we go without the help structure we only create uh, the ring and rind so for the planning we started with the we choose the angle uh, 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 same like as the tangential beam for the medial angle like uh, usually we first create the field and look at the uh, you know that view in beam i view we select for the tangential 3d crt is the optimal angle we create the starting angle of the medial from that value and the ending angle is uh, around 180 or 179 and we use three arcs and uh, we try to use uh, uh, we use three arcs uh, uh, first arc is let's suppose three, 305 to 180 and then the second is the opposite of this and the third is a copy of the first arc but with different collimeter angle so that it can reduce the some uh, you know if uh, in, in arc one and arc three both have the same uh, uh, angle so in order to reduce the leakage we uh, change the collimeter angle and we try to keep the x value of the jaws for the uh, for uh, for all the arcs up to 15 cm or maximum 16 cm due to the carriage limit and then uh, we also try to use uh, a sort of half beam block uh, r shape in order to reduce the uh, uh, dose to the oar and then we uh, for bolus we are very concerned because uh, for sometime if bolus is not properly controlled so it can create the hot spots uh, near the you know breast or uh, anterior part so we are also concerned about 105% is uh, or towards the anterior part for the lateral it is okay so we create the bolus so that it cannot extend beyond that ptv on both sides laterally and medially and then for the optimization we start with the we have a po uh, uh, photon optimizer here so we start our optimization and we usually use uh, uh, that upper uh, upper and lower objective and the for, for OAR, it's my experience, I use uh, upper GUD uh, with the A value, like uh, uh, just a brief uh, uh, introduction for the uh, upper GUD, like A is, if A is equal to one, so it, it, it controls the mean doses. So as I mentioned that we are concerned about the five grade doses. So we try to, I, I give the uh, contralateral um, organ at risk, the A, A value up to 15 or 20 because this a as we increase the a value it will work on the maximum dose so it works very well to control the uh, spillage and the uh, maximum doses towards the contralateral uh, organ at risk a is equal to 15 and or a, a value up to 20 you can use with the contralateral parts and uh, along with the normal physical uh, objective uh, you can use this up for gud and for the uh, and then we optimize it after uh, finalizing the optimization we remove the bolus and same like you guys like we create a we copy the plan and delete the bolus and calculate it so uh, if the one thing which is uh, we are concerned about the modulation we try not even for the rapid uh, chest wall or breast plan 
for all the uh, we met plans in our department we try to keep the gantry uh, modulation constant which is 4.8 so if there is like definitely in breast plants you have more gantry modulation with three arcs so if there is more gantry uh, modulation so we do patient specific qa for all the plants but uh, in order to reduce the complexity of the plant we uh, we we add one more arc if in case there is more gantry modulation usually we achieve a good coverage with this uh, three arcs also uh, including uh, imn because imn is little bit challenging if you compare with the only scf and chest wall or breast so if there is imn definitely the doses are to the heart and the contralateral is very difficult to achieve so we have created our like uh, with the past uh, some patient like around 50 patient we have created our database and we compare the doses and we created our excel sheet we i will share with you guys so we look for the OPTV coverage 95%. It, it is usually, if it's rapid arc pl plan, it is 98 or 99. It's easily, easily achievable. And SCF coverage is up to 98, 90, uh, 97 is okay. And we look for the hotspot because after deleting the bolus, uh, we get uh, more hotspots on the anterior part. So we, we are concerned about uh, hotspots. So maximum hotspot we accept here up to 110 or 112 but the volume is uh, volume of the hotspot is very uh, concerned uh, about uh, we are very concerned about it so we we see like if there is any uh, like more 105 107 towards the anterior part so we create again you know the you know better like how to control the hotspot we create the uh, convert dose to structure uh, 107 or 108 and then we push uh, we push this uh, help structure to reduce the hotspot and it works well and for the coverage, same like if, if we have a missing coverage in the OPTV, so we again create that dose to 95% structure and then we minus it from the actual PTV, uh, subtract it from using Boolean operators and then, then we push this structure uh, to uh, focus on that missing part. And for the uh, OAR doses, we, we see here V18 for the lung, uh, it should be uh, ipsi lateral lung. It should be less than 25 in case of SCF and uh, uh, supra uh, SCF and breast. And for uh, heart, we see V23. It should be less than uh, five percent. Ideally, our doctor wants this, so we achieve it. And mean dose to the heart also should less than uh, uh, should be less than for the left breast cases. Uh, mean dose four gray. We we try to achieve uh, like our best to achieve it uh, four gray. And in some cases, uh, due to weird anatomy, we have like up to five gray and six gray, but it's very rare. And also for the ipsi lateral lung, we also see some V5 and it should be less than 60 gray, 60% uh, of the volume. So uh, for the ipsi, uh, for the contralateral uh, part, uh, especially with the young patient, uh, we see the contralateral breast uh, mean dose and it should be less than three or 2.5 gray and also the contralateral dose to the lung, uh, contralateral lung dose should be less than 2.5 gray or three gray. So uh, in our department, this uh, uh, rapid arc breast planning is very challenging due to this uh, very strict uh, uh, OAR constraint. And also due to contralateral and low dose doctors, like we present it every, way, every week in our ch uh, chart round. So if there is any spillage and anything like more than this, so we need to replan it uh, because uh, 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 as I mentioned, the hard mean dose, uh, per, there is uh, some studies which shows that per every increase of one grade, there is some, some percent of increase of cardiac toxicities. So this is we do here. Uh, any question or any comments? Thank you, Mr. Sharif, for such an informative about, uh, discussion about your center. I would like to ask Mr. Rahil Mukhtar if he's going to give some feedback. I'd like to add something to this. Um, Mr. Rahim Ghar, if you would like to add something. Yes, uh, Oniza, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the presenter and uh, our expert panelist, Mr. Sharif, you guys have covered mostly, which is good for dosimetries. And uh, you know, I was expecting to discuss a few things about the physics point of view, because I think the forum is for the physicists. 
So I have a few comments and there may be some questions. Um, you know, for the breast, the tangents, or you can add hybrid plan with some IMRT, or you can put one arc, that's fine. But still the gold standard is the tangential plans, or you can make it hybrid, as I said. And the reason being is, I guess, the MLC interplay motion in conjunction with the breathing. So this is one of the, the challenge for the breast, especially. So secondly, one thing I would add that the case you presented, the mean dose was 7.73. And from the latest literature, it is not acceptable. Now people are pushing the dose up to the two because of some incidences that it can cause a, a cardiac arrest for the patients, it has happens. And it has been related with the, the left chest wall radiations typically after the mastectomy. Now I was uh, um, asking Moniza that of course, um, these kind of treatment modalities when you are implementing, and uh, you know, you must be using, I guess, maybe the accuracy or triple A, I'm not sure, but uh, there's a lot of inhomogeneity involved here because of the lung and the interface with the chest wall. So hopefully you have done a couple of measurements in terms of to verify the surface doses and the validity of your AAA, either the accuracy. So this is giving you the right doses. So have you done a patient specific QA on these patients or other general commissioning, a few tests, validity tests? Yes, sir, we have done, and we have also did in, in, in vivo dosimetry, uh, placing films on the patient's skin, and we have done uh, QA uh, to uh, the analysis of the dose, doses. And we are using Acuris for the calculation. All right, good. Thank you. Yes, I agree with Rahim Gaur, the thing with the breathing of the patient. That's why uh, I mentioned like uh, uh, the gold standard is true. Like it's, uh, uh, we uh, try to achieve like good doses with the 3D CRT, but in case of IMN or some complicated cases, we have to ultimately move with the rapid R. So that's what uh, we do for the, even for the right breast, we try to do uh, the, uh, if, it, if it is a rapid R case, so we, use, we, we do the breath hold. We don't go with uh, rapid R with free breathing usually in case the patient cannot uh, hold it breath or there is any age related problem. So we prefer to do it with the breath hold for both sides. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shai. Uh, Mr. Zaim Ahmed would like to say something, sir. You may open your mic and you may ask or review. Uh, thank you, Shari, for your sharing such a nice experience. My question is regarding from you regarding the modulation factor. Have you experienced any difference between the modulation factors when you are just limiting the jaw, jaws uh, in lytic with the carriage field? Uh, yes, Aslam Alaikum Zahim Bhai. Actually, we don't, uh, uh, we, we don't look this modulation factor, to be honest, but uh, we try to achieve, as I mentioned, the gantry speed, constant gantry speed, no gantry modulation with all three arcs. And if it if it, it is the case, like if, if there is more gantry modulation, like if it, the gantry is going with the one degree or two degree with most of the control points, then we, uh, then we go for the fourth R. So with the fourth R, it can, the overall gantry modulation is reduced. And we do uh, the patient specific QA before the treatment for all the patient, not only breast rapid R. So our like results so far, the results are fine. Like passing the criteria is, Acceptable. Thank you so much, Mr. Shai. Uh, I would like to, uh, any participant would like to ask anything? Yes, Mr. Kurpuram Khan, you may ask by muting yourself. Uh, my question is related to what is the immobilizing setup like doing VMAT? Like going so, so much precise on uh, VMAT. Then uh, whether the, uh, in your uh, center or other center, they are using uh, breast sheets or using wet clocks or uh, uh, breast support.
Unaza, you want to comment on it? No, sir. You. So we in our department we normally use the uh, same setup with uh, breath hold, but we do the breath hold. Uh, we use the surface guidance radiotherapy, which is very like its accuracy is very good. So this SGRT works uh, helps a lot us regarding the setup. And for uh, the breath hold, which uh, which uh, age patients you are uh, selecting, like above. 50 below 60, which is the age factor you have uh, yeah. selected? Any patient who can, like we prefer, like even if, if it is a 60, uh, 60 year old patient, but if she is healthy and she can hold the breath, like if she has a stamina, so we go with the breath hold. And if, if the patient cannot hold, the, it's up to patient. Like we do some coaching before the simulation. Uh, and if it is possible, then we prefer to go with the breath hold. Uh, but there is a little uh, contradiction like uh, using a fast forward trial like 26 and 5 there is a factor that uh, uh, a patient above 50 uh, uh, this 26 and 5 cannot be implemented plus uh, breath hold technique that's why this uh, i was asking sorry can you repeat again for them <clears throat> Yes, uh, do, uh, like breast treatment, like fast forward trial 26 and 5 gray. Uh, there is a in the, uh, protocol, there is a limitation of age, like above 50, uh, this protocol cannot be implemented. Along with yeah, the uh, same issue with the bread hole, uh, like doing a DIBH with that patient, ages above 50 are also not applicable. Are you, are you are saying that if a patient is fit and it can uh, up to age 60, you are doing, no, that's. Actually, yeah, the reference you are mentioning is fast forward trial. So it's 26 and five you are telling us. So yes. we are doing actually 14, uh, uh, 40, uh, I think we are doing 40, up to 40 in. Uh, yeah, 14, 15. Yeah, 14, 15 we are doing. Yeah, not so just I, my question is like DABH because of high is doses, sixty yeah. is uh, applicable. Is there yes, any patient, rule yeah. or there is any reference? No, it's uh, we actually if patient can hold and uh, if she is willing and she can do it and she she is uh, uh, she is okay with the coaching, then we go for it because uh, you know with SGRT. We have a, uh, our uh, beam is synchronized with the breath hold. So DIBH we, we are using basically. So if there are any variation uh, during the treatment, if patient breath uh, uh, cannot hold the breath, so uh, uh, on the spot, the machine stop the radiation. So is every patient is going on VMET in your, uh, in your center? No, no, no. Like doing no I mentioned like uh, we prefer to do 3D CRT as Rahim Gaur mentioned, it is a gold standard because of conformality. So if we have a, uh, if in case we have IMN nodes and we have some like uh, uh, abnormal anatomy or we are not getting a uh, mean dose of heart, like uh, even with the rapid, uh, not with the rapid arc, with the 3D CRT, we try to achieve mean dose of heart up to five gray. And uh, if the mean dose of heart, if even contact say, contact say the up to 10 gray, we can accept, but here we are more conservative regarding this cardiac toxicity. So we try to achieve a mean dose of heart with 3D CRT up to five gray. If worst case scenario might be seven gray with 3D CRT. So uh, we discuss this with, first we make the 3D CRT plan and we tell the doses, OR doses to the doctor. So we, we tell them like this is the maximum possible achievable plan. If you are happy, we can go. Otherwise, we, we have to do the rapid arc. So it's, it's a, like discussion between physicist and physician. And we, only for those special cases, we go for rapid arc, not every patient. Okay. Thank you. Here at AQS, we are also using the IDS and we do uh, prefer 3D CRT. Uh, because the doses are achievable in 3D CRT, if the volume is uh, extensive and is not, we are not able to achieve the doses, then we move forward to towards the VMAT. But yes, 3D is more preferred, and we do uh, we do we also do the DIBH with the 3D CRT planning. And if the doses are not being achieved, 
then we move towards the then the oncologist move towards the uh, uh, I have one question from uh, Sir Shaib. Uh, what uh, is the chest wall? What bolus thickness do you use in the chest wall? That is being uh, the bolus being used in the treatment planning. Uh, how much of CM bolus do you use in chest wall? Yes, before we were doing alternative, uh, I think uh, uh, th three months back, we were doing, uh, we were using uh, alternative bolus 5 mm. Then we did some uh, research with the 3 mm bolus. Uh, we did some, like my colleagues did some measurements and we presented in our chart round to the physician. And then they agreed to use 3 mm bolus uh, on chest wall with daily, uh, with daily treatment, not with uh, like 5 mm on alternative. So it's better to use 3 mm. So we are using now 3 mm bolus with chest wall, every treatment. In VMAT or in TDCR? In VMAT also, yeah, VMAT also. Like oh, yes. Uh, if... yes, Mr. Noreen, Ms. Noreen, you would like to ask anything? Uh, hello, Assalamu alaikum, Noreen here. Um, my question is, uh, if we are doing 3D CRT in breast planning, but, and we are using two mm slices. But we always have one slice, uh, the junction slice, which is always underdose or uh, overdose. So do you uh, people face the same issue? Like on junction, we have either it is hot or cold. And if it is not, how do you overcome that in 3D CRT? That's surprise, Lenoj. Yeah, yes, exactly. We do monoiso technique in uh, supraxilla and uh, breast or chest wall when they are combined. And we do with the patching field and field technique. Uh, yes, there is a heart at the junction. And firstly, we, uh, would, uh, what we practice is because firstly, we lessen the heart in the individual plan, then we make the sum plan. And the, uh, the junction is hot. We do the field and field for optimizing that junction area. And we are able to achieve the doses there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions I would like to, or any anyone more to add their discussion part? I can just comment on the, the question asked by the Noreen. If you are using sometimes the mixed energy, uh, low energy and high energy, because of higher penumbra of the, the higher energy, sometimes you might see the heart spores there. So if you are using only the low energy, you may not face that issue. As Moniza said, if you are using the monoacentic technique, you may not face that issue and you can control by making some plan and playing around there. One thing I want to ask about uh, uh, the low doses, how do you control in your uh, planning on uh, Like five gray or 12 gray, uh, do you guys like are concerned about these low doses and contralateral structure? In some of the cases, the oncologists are concerned. See, if uh, they are particularly concerned on some of the slices, if the dose is pillaged, we do make a structures and uh, then optimize on those in structure. Yes, so uh, one suggestion regarding like which we are using yes. here is the ring structure, uh, which is basically co uh, covering the unit. Uh, we can use that extract wall option with 2CM margin. So if you use the ring structure uh, and crop it from the lateral part, just uh, let the split go from, the, from this side. So this right. ring structure, uh, structure helps very well. No, do not cover the ring structure over all the PTV or SCF. Yes, yes, yes. Just, uh, just uh, crop it from the lateral part so that all the splits can go on the lateral side. Okay. Yes, some of the physicists are using ring structure, but we usually use ring structures and we had in the cases. We usually uh, achieve the donors in chest wall. But yes, you're right. Ring structure is a very... Uh, good solution towards lowering the low dose regions. Especially with the young patient, if the patient is young, so the contralateral, because there are some, you know, uh, literature regarding the secondary malignancies or the yeah. uh, 
uh, to the right contralateral breast so much focus uh, try to more focus heart as well as contralateral breast this is we are like very concerned about it mm. like try to achieve two gray two gray is achievable with the, mm. even with the imn notes two gray mean those for the right uh, right breast in case of left uh, breast uh, tumor is achievable two gray 2.5 gray is there is as you also told there are some of the complicated cases which we uh, in which the doses are not uh, we could not uh, are able to achieve because of the covering volume and errors but yes uh, mostly over here in <clears throat> cases we uh, up to achieve three gray to the contralateral and uh, if more is possible then we try our best to lower it to there but we are achieving three gray uh, from in our side. Anyone else would like to give their input or any question? Assalamu alaikum. I am uh, Asad, and thank you very much for joining this first planning review meeting. And I expect that other centers will come forward and give their names for the next month. Uh, we'll again, we'll uh, do this on next month, uh, last week of the February. And uh, if any center would like to come forward, they can contact us and uh, give us their name. And thank you very much, Sharif. Thank you very much, all of us, all of you for joining this this session the recording will be shared soon thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you